Hi friends, welcome to the Plain Fun RC channel. I'm your host, Saul, and we are continuing the build of the DO-335 by ESM Models. We're now shifting our focus to the elevators and to the rudders. We've got our elevator halves here, we've got our top rudder here, and our bottom rudder right here. We're going to go ahead and get our servos installed and also our hinges uh, glued in place and a couple other things as well. So let's get started. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue your update, I want to take a moment and talk to you about CA hinges. Uh, you know, it, one of the things I like to do on this channel is to pass along helpful building tips, and I want to pass along some helpful tips when you go to insert CA hinges. So with most ARFs, most ARFs are, aren't pre-hinged. What I mean by that, the hinges aren't glued in place. The slots are cut, as you can see here. The CA hinges may be, may be slid in place, but they're not glued in place. So the proper way to glue them is to first take a couple pins, like some dress pins, if you will, and just go through and insert them into the hinge, as you can see, roughly about halfway from, uh, from one point to the next. You can measure it or you can eyeball it, doesn't matter. And then you're just gonna simply take the CA hinge with the slot and just go through and actually insert the CA hinge into the slot itself. And the reason why we go through and put on the pins is so that way when you're inserting the CA hinge into the into the pre-cut slot, it doesn't get pushed all the way in. You don't want to, you don't want the CA hinge to be pushed in too much one way or the other because when you take the in this case the elevator here and insert it to the stabilizer here, you want it so that way you have an equal amount of the hinge on each control surface. So therefore the pins prevent uh, want the CA hinge from being pushed in uh, too far one way or the other. When, it, when a CA hinge gets pushed in too far one way, you run the risk of a control surface in-flight, uh, an in-flight uh, control surface failure. So just something to keep in mind. Now, once you've gone ahead and you've joined your control services together, in other words, you've slid your CA hinges in, what I strongly recommend you use is the Instaflex from Bob Smith Industries, BSI. Uh, the nice thing about the Instaflex is, is that it's a rubberized CA hinge glue. You can use regular CA glue, but however, most CA glues are not flexible. This is, it's, uh, and therefore what happens, it prevents the CA glue from cracking over time because CA glue that cracks over time can actually weaken. It is nothing more than liquid plastic, so that's why it's a good idea to use a rubberized or a flexible CA hinge glue. And right now, this is the only flexible CA hinge glue on the market, so check that out. All right, friends, let's go ahead and get our services joined together, and more to come. All right, friends, as we continue your update, we are working on installing the uh, servos in the top and bottom rudder. Here's our top rudder. Here's our bottom rudder. The way you can tell the difference, you can see the top rudder is taller and extends all the way up uh, the vertical uh, uh, horizontal or vertical stabilizer, excuse me. And then the uh, bottom rudder, you can tell it's shorter and it doesn't extend all the way down. The reason for that is that it, if this strikes the ground, it won't rip out the rudder. Anyway, we've got our servos installed pretty straightforward, two blocks. Uh, just like the same technique that we used previously on the wing, you're going to draw your lines on the side to determine uh, where to exactly place the servo. And the way you do that, once again, is you're just measuring from here to here and then taking your, your ruler and then drawing the lines on the side. So that way the dimensions here on the sides match the dimensions here for the servo frame that's on the vertical stabilizer. This is just a, an, a, a servo from a crashed F-16. Uh, you're going to be using high torque mini servos, high torque mini servos are what you're looking for. Somewhere about 80 ounces and up. Okay, just something to keep in mind. Uh, Savox has some wonderful servos. You can find those on uh, on uh, Amazon, uh, but they're about 90 bucks a pop. So these were just sitting around, so I thought I'd use these. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get our servos installed and our push rod and more to come. All right, friends, as you can see, we've got our servo installed on our servo plate. We've got our push rod in place, our snapper keeper, our clevis, and also our control horn. Now, the control horn is a basic screw-style horn, as you can see there, and you can see the pieces that make up the horn. We've got our two washers, top and bottom washers, our screw, which acts as the control horn, and there's the plastic part of the horn, our snapper keeper, and we also have our lock nut, which helps to hold the horn in place, and you're going to be using a two millimeter screw here to help hold the clevis onto the horn. Make sure that you're also using a lock nut as well. And, you, and as you can see, it works great. And that takes care of the right uh, elevator. So let's go ahead and work on the left elevator. More to come. 
All right, friends, you can see we've got our push rod in place and everything else uh, for our left elevator, and you can see it works fantastic. All right, let's switch our focus now to both the rudders. More to come. All right, friends, you can see we've got our top and bottom rudder here. We've got our push rods in place, uh, exactly like the elevators. It went uh, fantastic. And you can see they just work really, really well. Fantastic. All right, we're going to go ahead and shift our focus now to using our small carbon fiber rods and putting them in where the hinges are located to help secure our control services so they don't come out in flight. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, we are now focusing on using these templates that come with the kit itself. These templates are designed to allow you to go ahead and drill the four millimeter holes so you can insert the four millimeter anti-rotation pins into not only the elevator itself, but into both, uh, or this, excuse me, the horizontal stabilizer, but into both of the vertical stabilizers as well. You can see we've got one here that we've taped in place temporarily. Very straightforward, not very complicated. And you can see we've already gone ahead and drilled the holes there for our, our anti-rotation pins. Now, the template that's here and the template that is here and the template that is here, they're all three are different. The one that is on here is strictly just for the horizontal stabilizer. The one that's here is strictly for the bottom rudder and the one that's here is strictly for the top rudder. So if you have this RF and you're doing this, take your time. Uh, compare them to the services so you don't accidentally use the wrong one on the wrong surface and drill the holes in the wrong place. Now, not only are they used to drill the anti-rotation pins here on the surface, but you're going to use them here on the fuselage for the horizontal stabilizers and for the vertical stabilizers. Let's get our holes drilled. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, we're looking at the upper rudder, and you can see we have our anti-rotation pins in place. We've taken our template. We've taped it to the fuselage. The fuselage right now is actually on its side, so we're looking at the top of the fuselage. Now, what you want to do once the template is in place, you're going to drill your holes. By the way, I know I said 4 millimeter, but it's actually 532nd, and you need to open up the hole here so you can pass your servo lead through. Do not open up the hole here because if you do, the servo lead's going to go through here and it's going to wind up sitting in front of the firewall. You want it so that way it goes behind the firewall. Now, in addition to going through and taping your template in, the, in place, you want to make sure that before you tape it, pass your aluminum tube through the top of the fuselage and also through the bottom as well. That way you'll go ahead and you'll have proper placement of your template. One last thing to remember these templates, when they are actually on the control surface itself, have to be positioned in a certain fashion. So when you take the template and attach it to the fuselage, remember one side is where the control surface goes. The opposite side is going to go up against the fuselage. And that may, uh, that'll make more sense once we go ahead and do the horizontal stabilizer. All right, friends, let's go ahead and continue punching our holes. More to come.
Perfect. Ta-da. <laughs> All right, friends, as you can see, we've got our elevator in place, our left side. What we're going to do is we're going to wind up holding off on gluing this in place along with our rudder and our rudders and our other elevator as well. Um, so it's important that we not do that just yet because we have these wonderful uh, aluminum spars. And when you go through and you pass the other aluminum spar through the top here, okay, it's going to create a crisscross pattern on the inside here. And these uh, spars sit behind the firewall. So when you go and try to mount the actual motor back here, it's going to be rather difficult because of the fact that uh, these bars will be in the way. So do not mount your surfaces until your rear engine is installed. So just keep that in mind. All right, friends, more to come.